Okay, so 3.27 has to do with something called a spectral decomposition. Uh, this is something that you sort of encounter if you go farther in to linear algebra. But uh, basically, it's sort of a way of taking a matrix and re-representing it in terms of its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, and it, it almost is sort of analogous to sort of a standard matrix decomposition. Because remember, if you're dealing with something like, for example, a vector x, right, and this is equal to like a, b, c, right, we can decompose this into the sum of, you know, a times uh, basis of vector e1 plus b times basis of vector e2 plus c times basis of vector e3, right, and this is, this is a decomposition of my matrix. Uh, sort of in the same way, uh, a actual you know, full on square matrix represented by an operator can be decomposed in the same way, in an analogous way, I should say, into uh, essentially a sum of the individual eigenvalues. Uh, and this time, instead of just slapping on sort of the eigenvectors that represent the basis, you're going to do projection operators. So en bra, or no, cat, and then en bra, like this. Uh, and if you need sort of a, a reminder of what this actually signifies, this is a projection vector in terms of EN. We went over projection vectors at the very start of the chapter, uh, or not the chapter, but for, the, for this section. So I would recommend if you don't remember what they actually do to go back and look at that. But basically a projection vector basically picks out what part of a vector lies along, along sort of the thing that the projection vector is using. So like if I do like, you know, P hat operated on X, right? Uh, this is going to give me like, you know, uh, if p hat was in terms of e, right? So this is going to be like e n, e n x, right? So this is going to give you. This is just a measure of how far along e n x is, because remember, inner products is going to give uh, the, what they give you is basically like how aligned are. It's a scalar that represents how aligned two vectors are, uh, and then that's just going to get multiplied against the actual original. You know, vector that the P is using. So projection vectors uh, or projection operators basically tell you how aligned with the res with the actual projection vector of interest another vector is. So uh, that's what the projection vector is. Uh, we're using it here, and this gives you sort of an analogous representation of what decomposing you know a standard vector would be like. But instead of a vector, you're dealing with a matrix. Uh, now we're trying to show that spectral decompositions are valid, which is I want to show that this is true, right? Uh, so the hint we're given is that we want to, in order to show that this is true, we want to show that this is true, which is that, you know, an operator is defined by its action on any possible vector. So you want to show that, you know, this operator act on any possible vector is equivalent to the spectral decomposition acting on any possible vector for any vector alpha. So uh, let's write this out according to the hint. So Hint says let's just start with q hat vector alpha, so q hat vector alpha. And I need to somehow get a summation in there. Well, that's easy. I can decompose my vector alpha as standard, right? So this is equal to q hat and then a summation in n of the individual elements a n on the basis vectors e n, like that. q hat can then move in very easily, right? Because this is a multi I can just multiply it in or distribute it in. And this gives me the individual q n elements, because remember, uh, q on e n is going to give me the corresponding eigenvalues because of the fact that this has a complete set of eigenvalues defined by this uh, complete basis. So this is going to give me a summation of n and then a n q n e n like that, right? And at this point, well, I have a q n of e n and I have a q n of e n here. And remember, my final goal is to get something that looks like this, right? So I have the summation of n. I have the q n and e n. Uh, what I'm missing now is sort of the rest of this, and that comes that's supposedly going to come from a n. So let's rearrange this and make this a little bit easier to read. Uh, I'm going to move the a n to the right. I'm going to move everything else to the left. So q n and then ket e n and then a n here, because now, well, this part matches this part. So what I have to do now is I have to somehow turn a n into this, right? So here, let's write this in a different color. I want to somehow prove that a n is equal to the inner product of e n with alpha. So uh, how do I do this? Well, let's sort of 
start with alpha because we're more comfortable representing the individual elements of alpha using the original alpha vector. So alpha cat is equal to just the sum of the individual a n elements multiplied by the corresponding e n basis vector, right? And at this point, what can I do to get rid of this n summation term? And hopefully, you know, you've done Fourier's trick enough times in the previous chapters to instantly know that that's what we're supposed to do. So let's just take a bra of em on both the left and right. So if I take em with alpha on the left and, you know, summation of n of a n and then em with en, right? This term automatically is going to become a Dirac delta of nm which means that every single term in the summation is going to equal zero, except for the case where n is equal to n, uh, or n is equal to m, in which case this term just goes to one. So if m is equal to n, then e n and alpha is equal to a n, just like that, right? Because every other term in the summation cancels to zero. And just like that, we're done. We've proved it, right? Because if this is true, I can take this, plug it back into this, and this is going to give me summation n, q n, E n and then E n and then alpha, right? And now I have this whole thing at the front and then this vector alpha at the back and that exactly matches this. Uh, and just like that, I'm done with this problem. Or not this problem, but this, uh, this part. So let's move on to part B. Okay, so B is pretty much the exact same thing as A, but this time instead of being asked to prove spectral decomposition for uh, a vector and matrix notation, you're being asked to prove it for functions. So we want to show that this is true, and we want to show it specifically for the case of equation 3.100, where we're dealing with uh, an exponential of an operator. So equation 3.100 was basically just uh, the part of the book that was telling us that we can treat functions of operators exactly the same way as we can treat normal functions of variables, and that uh, we can do things like power series with them just fine. So according to equ equation 3.100, e to the power of the operator q is in fact exactly the same as e to the power of a standard va uh, variable of x, where we could just take this, we can expand it in terms of a power series. I can say one plus q hat plus one half q hat squared plus one over three factorial q hat cubed plus blah, 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 blah. And this is in fact equal to the general summation of k equals zero to infinity of q hat to the power of k over k factorial, right? And I want to show that if I, you know, plug this equation of e to the power of q hat into this spectral decomposition equation, that it's going to give me the exact same expansion. So uh, let's do that. Um, so according to the spectral decomposition, e to the power of q hat is going to equal the summation in n of e to the power of little qn, right, because function of the corresponding eigenvalues, uh, and then a projection vector uh, or projection operator of ket en bra en, right? And uh, sort of one thing I want to do right away before we go any further is I want to recognize that I'm trying to equate this to this, right? So what this means is that I'm somehow, there's gonna be something that comes up in this expression at some point. It's gonna be able to like turn into, you know, something like q hat squared or q hat cubed or so on. And I wanna be able to recognize that when I encounter it so that I actually, I, I can actually turn it into that without sort of struggling and not knowing what to do. And what I mean by that is I wanna know what does q hat squared look like in terms of a spectral decomposition? What does q hat cubed look like in terms of a spectral decomposition? Because if I know what that looks like, then once I get to something that looks like it down here, I'm actually going to be able to convert it up to here without any issues. Because if I don't, and you know, somehow q hat squared or q hat or q hat cubed ends up looking like some weird thing that I don't recognize immediately, I'm going to end up just doing a bunch of extra work, not knowing how to convert it up to here. So uh, let's just do that. So hypothetically, right, if we consider q hat squared, what does this become? if I shove this into, you know, something like a spectral decomposition. Well, uh, this is going to give me something like, you know, for example, uh, 
going on. I think my screen is glitching. That's very annoying. Uh, okay, yeah, so Q hat squared. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're, instead of sort of like shoving it into here, because if, if you do that, you're gonna get some crazy thing and I don't wanna do a direct substitution. I can take advantage of the fact that I can just literally say like, this is equal to Q hat, Q hat, right? And if this is equal to Q hat times Q hat, well, I know what Q hat is. This is Q hat is just gonna equal a summation, you know, from like n equals one to infinity of Q n E n projection, right? And if I multiply this by some other Q hat, right? This is the same thing. It's just you know, let's use some other index m equals one to infinity instead of n of Q m. EM projection like this. So in that case, if I multiply, if I take Q hat squared, for example, I just multiply these, I combine the corresponding uh, summation terms, I get QN, QM, and then EN, EN inner project with EM, EM, right? Oops, there we go. Because what, what I'm doing is I'm just taking these in order. So this times this, and then multiply by this times this, right? So if I do that, well, because these are basis vectors, right? These are complete orthonormal basises. This thing automatically equals a Dirac delta of nm. So that means n has to equal m, otherwise every term equals zero. So if n has to equal m, then in that case, well, this is just equal to summation of n, because remember, all of these m terms, only only the one where m is equal to n is going to be non-zero. Every other m term is going to be just nothing. So this just basically the Dirac delta is going to get rid of the summation of m. It's going to be qn times qn, and then en, inner product en with itself, en. This cancels to 1, so I'm left with qn squared and then projection vector en. And, you know, by the same logic, right, if I do like q hat cubed or q hat to the fourth or whatever, it's gonna, it, they're all gonna just equal, you know, the corresponding power of qn, right? So I can say that more generally, q hat to the power of anything, any power of k, is just gonna equal the summation n equals one to infinity of qn to the power of k, and then the projection operator for EN, like that. And this is very nice because I'm already seeing something over here that looks kind of like that. So I can get something like Q hat to the power of K and that correspondingly is the top half of what I'm actually trying to get to make this proof valid, right? So just like that, we've already sort of like, we're halfway there. Now let's actually go back to the spectral decomposition of E to the power of Q hat. So what can I do at this point, right? Well, I can recognize that, you know, e to the power of qn, this is, you know, this is still an exponential. And this is still an exponential to some variable or some operator, right? So I can expand this in a power series in the same way that I can expand this in a power series, right? e to the power of qn is just also equal to a summation of k equals zero to infinity of e to the power of, or, sorry, uh, to the infinity of qn to the power of k over k factorial, right? So I can rewrite this now with two summations, one in n and one in k, and this is going to be qn to the power of k over k factorial en projection. And now I'm starting to see some stuff that I want. For one, I'm seeing the, the summation of k that I'm supposed to get here, right? So I'm gonna immediately move that to the left so that I don't have to deal with it anymore because I know that that's supposed to show up in my final proof. So I'm gonna move the summation of k over to the left. I'm gonna move the one over k factorial all the way over to the left. And what I'm left with now is a summation of n of q n to the power of k and then a projection vector for e n. And would you look at that? This is exactly what we proved, right? We just showed that we can get powers of big Q to the K by this format. And that's exactly what this is, right? So this is actually just equal to the summation of K 
1 over k factorial, and I'm going to write it in purple just so we know where we got it, of big Q hat to the power of k. And, well, that's literally what we were trying to get here, right? Let's just move it down so that we can see it. This is the same thing. And because of that, we've finished the proof. We've basically showed that, hey, you know, if I shove e to the power of q into a spectral decomposition, the result that I get is exactly equivalent to as if I had taken the power series of eq by expanding it this way, right? And uh, with that, we are done with this problem.